Hi everyone, my name is Hannah with Solo Suit, and I'm really excited about today's video because we're gonna show you how you can win your credit card debt lawsuit. Being sued for credit card debt is not a good feeling and it can be pretty isolating. You may have already gone online to look for an attorney to represent you in the case and discovered that it's expensive, time consuming, and a pretty complicated process to find a lawyer. Luckily, Solo Suit exists to help people like you represent yourself in court and feel less alone throughout the debt collection lawsuit process. In today's video, we're going to show you an interview that I recently had with a real solo suit customer who used our services to fight off a major debt collection agency and credit card company in court. And win. his name is Mason from South Carolina, and here's how he beat Swigger and Associates and Discover Credit Card in court. Thank you so much, Mason, for joining us to share your experience about using Solo Suit to fight your debt collection lawsuit. We really appreciate you. Um, first and foremost, can you tell us a little bit about the debt that you incurred? This was a debt from a credit card company. I'd say it was four and a half years went by um, after this account was closed or so I thought, and they decided to, Zwicker and Associates decided to pursue the debt. When I received it in the mail, I of course was confused at first because I was like, why would this very old debt, uh, would they be coming after me? And the amount they were asking for was not what I recalled owing at all on that account. Um, oh, interesting. So do you remember like how much they claimed that you owed versus how much you potentially actually owed? The amount that they said I owed was $5,777, which was far beyond any amount that was owed. They were, they were pursuing that debt. And I knew the last time I had that account was years ago. I just sort of did some digging, uh, called my bank to confirm when was the last time a payment was made to this account. They were able to immediately verify uh, after some digging that it had been four and a half years since uh, any payment was made to this company. So it was clearly a debt collection company that had purchased the debt and decided to pursue it. Got it. So. So it sounds like you, the debt was so old that you had kind of forgotten about it or you had forgotten making payments on that particular account. Is that kind Absolutely, of yeah. yeah. I had completely forgotten about the account. I thought it just was gone, done. Yeah, and do you, so you said they were, it was over $5,000 that they claimed that you owed. Do you remember like realistically how much you think you actually owed at the end of the day? Or On that credit card, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was only around 1500 I want to say. Yeah. Um, and that was after I had made a good faith effort to obviously pay that card down um, and pay it completely off. Uh, and of course, I did uh, everything that I could to pay that card back. Um, but uh, yeah. Cool. Well, so tell us a little bit about how you found out that you were being sued. It sounds like you got something in the mail. Is that right? This is a Monday morning at 7 a.m. Uh, that a sheriff served me with lawsuit papers from this um credit card company uh, and at first nerve wracking because we were woken up very early. Um, bless my wife, she was um, confused and um, just as nervous as I was about this situation. I, I was wondering to myself, how were they able to do this at this point? I began searching or Googling uh, online on how the best way to answer a lawsuit because I knew that if I didn't respond or didn't do anything or take any action, that it would not work out in my favor. I found solo suit, saw that I could file the answer document that I needed to file with the court um, to at least keep this from getting any worse. <laughs> sure, yeah. So you got served on a Monday morning, you said, and it was a sheriff that dropped it off at your house? Yes. That was probably pretty intimidating, I'm guessing. So nerve wracking. Yes, I was wondering, well, like, what did I do? <laughs> yeah. I have no was... idea what this is about. And then when he handed me the documents and I, I reviewed them, I was like, oh, this is this is a very old account that I, I have no idea why this is happening right now, so. Sure. Yeah, so you got served on the Monday. Um, did it say anywhere on the court documents, like when you had to respond by? So South Carolina, allows you uh, 30 days to respond. Um, of course, I wasted no time, found solo suit, filled out the required uh, information to fill out the answer document. Uh, and I think by the end of that same day, I had sent the, or requested that the answer document be sent to the courts. Wow, so you were right on it by the I end. I was, I mean, talk about nerves being wrapped. Yeah. I was, uh, yeah, 
Can you tell us a little bit about your experience using the Solo Suit software and everything? How did it go for you? I'm grateful to have found you all on Google. There are those certain websites that offer not legal advice, but um, ways to go about, you know, what if you receive this? Here's what you do next. Um, but none of them really help you out. They just sort of tell you what kind of what you should do, but there's no real definitive answer on um, what's next or what you should do or any guidance on like how you should file an answer or anything like that. Uh, I found solo soon. Uh, so I went through the process. It asked some simple questions on the, the summons that I had received, um, the date, the court, um, followed that step-by-step -step process, which I found very um, intuitive and easy uh, because it just asked the questions and it even had uh, sort of images on where that information was located. So like case number, uh, the court, uh, and I filled out all that information. Uh, and on the last step, of course, it asked uh, the question of if I would like to free file and send that myself or have you all send it. And of course I chose um, to have it sent on my behalf and it was just sort of an instant sigh of relief, um, just knowing that I was answering that document. Wow. So it yeah. sounds like you used our standard package, which um, is where you can create the answer document on our website and then we file it for you. Um, did you see after, after using our services about how long it took before the court had received the answer and filed it into your case? Yes, so it was about, I wanna say 10 days. And of course, once that was received, I was sort of um, hitting refresh on the, the, the court's website um, daily just to check and see if that had gone through. And of course it did finally after like 10, 10, 11 days, I think it was 11 days. Yeah. In our experience, a lot of the time we'll send the documents within a day or two of someone um, using our services. And then oftentimes the court will take a, another few days to process it on their end before it's actually, it actually ends up filed into the case. So it's, it's good that you were really proactive in, in um, getting it taken care of like the same day that you were served with the documents. I love that um, proactivity. Now, I appreciate you sharing uh, tracking numbers because I was able to see when exactly the court received it. Um, and then of course it was just a um, waiting game to see when yeah. they actually acknowledged receiving it. You should have received a tracking number for the court, but also for the opposing attorney who we also served your answer document to, right? Yes. And were you, did you did you see that both of those went through and everything went smoothly there? Yes, they both actually received them, I think, around the same day. So tell me a little bit about what happened after the answer was filed with the court and into your case. After about, I would say, eight days, I received a response from the plaintiff attorney um, in a nice manila envelope. Um, and they were filing for a motion for summary judgment after receiving the answer documents and after the court had acknowledged them. Of course, once I received that, I read over the paperwork and they were essentially submitting the same documents in the summary judgment that they had submitted originally, which I knew were inaccurate or false. They were submitting a just a statement of how much was owed from Discover, which was not an accurate representation of when the account was last uh, paid on. It was just literally a letter from Discover that said this account ending in XXX uh, owes this amount of money without any further proof or representation of how old the debt was, the accurate amount of what the debt was when the account was closed or when it was last paid on on receiving the motion of summary judgment, again, went back to solo suit <laughs> and knew that, um, I, knew, I knew that there were a couple of options on your website and I, uh, I saw that filing a motion for, a motion to compel arbitration was an option. I thought not doing anything with the motion for summary judgment uh, would not work out in my favor. So I proceeded to file the motion to compel arbitration. It was shortly thereafter that the judge um, scheduled a hearing. Okay, so you filed the motion to compel arbitration in response to Zwicker and Associates um, motion for summary judgment, right? Yes. And then when the court received your motion to compel arbitration, they set up a hearing? Yes. Okay, so um, and you used Which... Solo Suits website to, to um, generate the motion to compel arbitration document, right? I did. And then you filed it into the court yourself? Yes. 
Okay, did you mail it or did you drop it off at the courthouse? So I mailed it myself. Um, and because the court was in the same, you know, is in the same city here, uh, I just thought that, um, you know, it would take like a day or two to get there by filing it here or sort of mailing it out here. Sorry. And I'm, I'm assuming it only took a couple days to get to the court, right? Yeah, like a day or two. Uh, and they acknowledged, I think, maybe five to six days later. Okay. So about the same timeline as your answer document, right? Round about, yeah. Yeah. It sounds like the court, did they send you documents letting you know that there was a hearing schedule or how did that work? Yes. So, of course, I was, again, um, anxiety was setting in uh, and I was hitting refresh on the uh, website of the, the, the court's to see, uh, I noticed that they had scheduled the hearing, but of course I had not received an official mail document yet. Um, so once I saw that, it was at least a sigh of relief that I knew this was going to go to the, go before a judge, uh, which is exactly what I wanted to happen, to be able to show the proof that this was beyond the statute of limitations uh, of years. So I would say maybe five days later, I received the actual uh, summons to appear before the court, uh, which was scheduled for 9.30 a.m. Um, and so I just thought, let me get my paperwork in order, which I had already done my due, gil- due diligence in contacting the bank, which uh, as stated before, um, the bank had sent me statements on showing proof of when I, the last payment was ever made to this credit card company. Um, I also reached out to family friend that recommended that I get a copy of the um, bank's uh, arbitration clause as well just just to have that that's awesome <laughs> Sounds i was like still very nervous but but confident that i had um i think supporting documentation to show uh exactly how i felt about what was happening yeah it sounds like you really had all your ducks in a row that's awesome um so yeah tell us a little bit about what the court process itself was like you showed up i'm guessing was it hard to find the courtroom nerve wracking um so i've never been in this situation before of course um never been to civil court um so i showed up checked in um with my nice little folder with all of my documentation in it uh prepared to see the judge and fortunately uh zwicker and associates uh, did not appear they did not show up of course um, works out in my favor yeah that's awesome. I'm glad they didn't show up. But um, what happened at court? Did they ask you to present anything or did they just say, oh, so she she did ask um, what brought us in front of the, the courts. Uh, and I mentioned that uh, quite plainly that the credit card company was pursuing a debt that was beyond the statute of limitations for our state. Uh, and she was immediately able to see with the I think the evidence that they submitted in their initial summons and complaint and the subsequent uh, motion for summary judgment because they they submitted the same documentation for both Mm -hmm. uh, which just shows that they weren't really acknowledging what you're they're just trying to to really push that to the judge and just make them see oh this person owes this amount of money and we think that we should win and in reality i I just presented to the judge that this is this is why they i mean this is why they're incorrect and what they're asking for and what they're stating so you did show the judge all of your documents and they saw yes. it's like she saw pretty quickly that you had a great case and that they were in your favorite. Yes. That's awesome. Okay. I would definitely recommend to, to someone just have your things in, in order, like have your, your documentation in order for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, it sounds like you did everything right from, you know, being proactive, um, responding quickly, and then from doing all the background research that you needed to do on the statute of limitations on um, the deadline to respond and all the other sorts of things that you did to prepare for the court that's awesome congrats to you like thank you you did most of the work but hopefully solo suit solo suit was a huge help because i I, in in not only looking at your website and helping construct the answer document and knowing what steps to take next as far as like the motion to compel arbitration there is also helpful information on your website on like How many days do we have to respond to a lawsuit? What should I do next? What are the best steps to take next? And I noticed on your, like on your blog, for example, you have um, answers to like how to respond to like even certain companies that may be, I don't, 
you know, mean to call them collection mills, but like, you know, how to respond to certain companies that it's just uh, sort of what they do. And, and yeah. there's a clear and clear way to respond to them. Well, I'm so glad that our resources and our services were able to help you out and prevail in your debt lawsuit case. Um, you said that the court ruled in your favor um, and that they dismissed your case with prejudice or without prejudice? With prejudice. So with the judge, I, I think presenting the evidence, um, I don't know, it, 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 I think it allowed her to see that that not only were they pursuing this debt, but that it was beyond the statute of, you know, it was beyond the statute of limitations. Uh, and it just, what they were pursuing just wasn't valid. So I think that, I think that she realized that and just, you know. Yeah. So with prejudice, meaning like you can never be sued for this same debt again, right? Yeah. This debt is gone. It, yeah. It's gone. Which is that so, I can't tell you, I can't tell you how relieving that was to receive that letter. I can imagine that probably is a great feeling. Um, well, Mason, I just have two more quick questions for you. Sure. Uh, the first is, what was the craziest or most surprising part of the whole process? The craziest part of the process, I mean, obviously, it's a shock to the system to deal with a situation like this, because again, I've, I've never I've never been in this situation, so I had absolutely no clue on how to handle it. Super thankful to have solo suit in place, because without it, I would have had no idea how to respond to this. The solo suit made it a step-by-step -step process and easy to follow, brought the anxiety down from 100 to to attend. That's awesome. So it actually leads really nicely into my last question. And that's um, what was the best part for you of using solo suit? The straightforward process, the answers, uh, letting you know that you're not alone, I think was the biggest uh, relief. I hope to to not be in the situation again. Yeah. Certainly use you all if I find it, myself in this situation again. But yeah, hopefully you never have to be our customer again. But right. if, if so, <laughs> Um, I hope that we can we can help in a similar way. And um, I do think that, you know, being sued for debt can be kind of an isolating feeling. Um, and so at the end of the day, I'm really glad that if anything, we we made you feel like you weren't alone in the process. So but Absolutely. but yeah, well, thank you so much, Mason. So I really appreciate you taking the time to share your story. Um, these are the kind of stories that we love to hear um, because this is why we do what we do at Solo Suit. Um, we just want to help people feel less alone throughout the process and eventually prevail. So yeah. thanks so much for sharing. Well, we hope that today's video was helpful and that you learned a thing or two about how you can win your debt lawsuit. If you have any questions or if you just need a helping hand, head on over to solosuit.com where you'll find endless resources from legal documents that you can personalize to your case to educational resources on our blog. It's our mission at Solo Suit to help you feel less alone during your debt lawsuit. Thanks so much for watching and good luck with your case. Solo Suit is rooting for you.